afternoon, or good evening, whichever one um, this podcast is reaching you on. Well, you have just tuned in to the 3 a.m. download morning devotional. And if you've tuned in or listened to the podcast from the past few days of, of the morning devotional, you know we've been talking about prayer, or if you've seen my Facebook page, you know we've been talking about having a and having an effective prayer um, as you go into pray. Now this is talking about when you go into pray a single prayer. When you go into your prayer closet, this isn't for um, taking the place of the format that God has already laid out for us in the book book of Matthew on how to pray. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is simply just um, insight on how to have an effective prayer. Let's say you've been praying for something in particular. Um, You've been praying for your child, your husband, uh, your family member, um, your finances, um, someone on your job, something that's happening on your job, something you've been on your knees about praying, and you're having trouble getting answers uh, getting that prayer answered. Well, here's something I wanted to discuss with you today. One, you need to check how you're praying. Check what you're praying and check and make sure that it's in God's will. Because if it's not, then, you know, the scripture also talks about when you ask, you ask amiss, which means you ask for something that's not in God's will. Now, yesterday, you um, heard me go over the um, the conditions of an effective prayer and how, well, not yesterday, I'm sorry, the day before yesterday, because yesterday I talked about ask, but the day before yesterday, I talked about the conditions or of, on having an effective prayer life. And let me rehash those in order to have an effective prayer life. First, your prayer that you're praying, it must glorify God. That's first and foremost number two it must be consistent and in harmony with his word and number three last but not least that prayer must bring you joy okay but it can't bring you joy if 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 it's not according to the will of god or if it's something um out of the will of god like i've told you before um god mentions well, I'm sorry, Jesus mentions in the Bible that, you know, when we pray, there's certain things that we have to do. Um, there's certain conditions that we need to meet when we pray. Um, and God won't give you anything if it doesn't bring you joy, because if it brings you joy, it brings him glory. You see what I'm saying? And God says that he should never share his glory with another. So he'll give you the joy. He let, he'll let you bask in his glory, but he will not share his glory. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference between basking in his glory and taking his glory. God's a jealous God. And I just wanted to get that out there. Um, but as far as having an effective prayer, you need those three things. You need to make sure that it glorify God, that prayer that you're praying that it glorifies God, and two, that it's consistent and in harmony with his word, and three, that it brings you joy. You, you know what I mean? When Jesus, again, you know, like you've heard me say in the previous devotionals uh, this week in dealing with prayer, that when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, not my will, but thy will be done. So you got to make sure that it's in God's will what you're praying and maybe you know that'll help somebody with getting the prayer answer that maybe you change up your prayer a little bit maybe you ask ask him while you're praying god how do i how, how do you see me help me to repent for being selfish in my prayer you know what i mean all right so with that said let's jump into it today with the last one uh in this series uh for pray and it's the why the P R A Y, and today we're on why. Why? Because it's definitely needed. That's why. 
And the Y stands for yield. Now, in the book of Psalms, chapter 37, it provides to us uh, the why. And like I said, this is the fourth step in this. It provides the why uh, for the four elements to have an effective prayer. Uh, let's see. Psalms 34, I'm sorry, Psalms 37, verse 4 says this. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now listen, the, the, Now I'm going to get a little technical, a little in deep depth on you, so if you're not a Hebrew scholar, scholar, because I'm not, so I had to look this up, and this is what the Hebrew word for delight is in this verse. It literally means to become soft or pliable, okay? The Hebrew word, I'm going to say it again, um, the Hebrew word for delight in this verse, in Psalms 37, verse 4, is this. It literally means to become soft, to become pliable, which means we have to be flexible when we're praying, when we're yielding to God. You understand? We have to be pliable. We have to be soft because he is the potter and we are the clay. And he molds us. Not only does he mold us in character, in our emotions, in our finances, in our family, in our well-being, in our livelihood. Not only does he make us, um, molds us in those things, he also molds our prayers. Well, you're probably asking yourself, well, what happened to free will? This is the free will part right here. You have a choice to accept the pliability or not. But God will get what he wants out of this. This means that delighting in the Lord is assuming a yielded posture before God. Yielded posture. You know, I, I wrote something down uh, the other day. Um, and I was in a service the other day and I wrote something down. And I said that sometimes we have to change our posture from a posture of taking to a posture to receive because oftentimes when we consider ourselves yielding to something we're posturing ourselves to take something instead of having an a posture having a posture to uh, of yielding a posture of receiving something does that make sense now um now, let me go back to this a little bit. Delighting in the Lord is assuming a yielded posture before God. So the why in pray, like I said, it stands for yield. Now, the question is, how do you practice yielding to God when you pray? Just think about that. Do you do all the talking or do you listen? Now, yielding is when you, shh, and you wait, you listen, and you seek to hear from God. Because if you seek, like I told you the other day, if you seek, you shall find. If you knock, it shall be open unto you. Now, in my own practice of prayer, I will often bow before God, or I personally will lay prostrate, and I'll ask him, God, is there anything you want me to say today? Do you have any instructions for me today? Is there anything you want me to change? Now, you know, later, and if you know the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread, right? Here's what that means. Not only does he provide your meals, your gas, your air, your, your, your water, the things that you need to survive, but he also provides for you your daily tasks. Who do I talk to? Who do I speak to? How do I speak to them? Where do I go? If there's someone in my path, oh God, that I need to reach today, Help my heart to discern that and pick up on the spiritualness, on, on, on the spirit and, and, and the direction to be able to speak life into that person or minister to that situation or be able to pray over that person. That's being yielding. When you wake up in the morning, he said, I will give you your daily bread. You know, he, you ask, Lord, give me my daily bread. 
what is it that you want me to do today? This is the bread of life. Because why? Because man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So how do we survive? Not by natural bread, but the meat and the, and the substance that God gives us in the morning where his mercies are renewed daily. Come on, somebody. Now, God, is there, now you ask these things. God, is there anything, anything you want me to say? Do you have any instructions for me? Is there anything you want me to change? Then I silently wait for him. And I listen. Now, as you assume this posture of, of being yielded and waiting quietly before him, you will be surprised at some of the things that come to your attention. Someone says, well, will he speak to you in an audible voice? Some people have that gift. Not everyone has that gift, but believe it or not, more often than not, God will speak to you. But because we haven't been trained on how to hear his voice, we miss it so often. How do we hear his voice? Here's a quick tip for you on that. The devil will never tell you to do anything positive. God's word, when he speaks to you, always confirms his word through the bible so if what you're hearing doesn't line up with the word of god then it's not god speaking to you if what you hear doesn't sound right and makes you uncomfortable nine times out of ten it's not god you understand because when god speaks it's a peace it's a peace that comes over. Like you hear in the Bible when it says it's a mighty roar. But during those times when it's a mighty roar, there's also a peace that comes with that. The devil will never come and tell you to pray for this person. Or if a person comes to your mind and all, all of a sudden you feel the urge to pray for them or call their name out in prayer. That God, whatever they're going through right now, touch their situation. The devil won't do that. Not at all. So that's some insight of how to hear God's voice and when he's speaking to you and when he's not. Okay? Now, like I was saying, before him, waiting quiet, when, when I'm waiting quietly before him, um, I sit and I'm, I listen. But like I said, you'll probably be surprised at some of the things that come to your attention. You need to spend more time with your daughter. You ever heard that? Take your wife out on a date, men. Bake your neighbor a pie and build a bridge over which the gospel I can travel. In other words, love your neighbor. Love on them. Be kind to them. Show them something. Bake them a pie. Bake them some rolls. Bake them a, a, with a casserole. Ain't nobody got to die for you to bake a casserole to take it to somebody and be nice. Just take it over there. Develop a friendship with them. That way they can see the God in you and how your posture of yielding to his will through your prayer life will begin to open up doors for you to be able to minister to them and then make them, your neighbor, your friend, your family member, more receptive to the word that is coming forth. You understand? That's a good word right there. Uh, spend more time praising me. God wants you to praise. God operates better and he works miracles in worship and in prayer. Praise. I'm sorry. When you're praising God, he loves to work miracles out during that time. That was the very first letter. Your praise. He wants you to spend more time praising him. So the things that you do ask for is more easily accessible. Show your gratitude and appreciation for those who have been helping you in your life. That's something else you might hear. Here's something else. You will indeed hear from God if you ask him to speak into your heart. I remember a situation, I'm not going to go too deep into this, but I remember a situation where our oldest daughter came and asked, 